In today's world, one of the major areas of consideration, talk, and dialogue is about generations. We often find ourselves in intergenerational dialogue, but today I'd like to really get us to think about this concept of intergenerational collaborative intelligence and intergenerational trust. This week in the U.S. Senate, there was a hearing where they talked about stats that should amaze most of us and give us a moment of pause. Forty percent, forty percent of uh, suicides take place uh, for folks between the ages of 10 to 14. It's the second leading cause of death for folks of that age. What we know is that all generations want one thing and have something in common. They all want to be seen. They all want to be heard. And they all want to be valued. So for all of us, as we begin this conversation about what does it mean to be an uh, intergenerationally trusted leader, what does it mean to experience intergenerational collaborative intelligence, I'd like to challenge us today to look at that from a different uh, venue point. Rather than thinking about what does it take for a generation to listen to me, how about if we figure out what does it take for you to collaborate with a generation? And when we talk about intergenerational collaborative intelligence, what are we really talking about? It's our ability to identify, execute, and engage around really important salient issues. Years ago, when I think about the generational conversation, it was often one-sided. You had an older generation that would tell you what you needed to do and a younger generation that simply followed. Well, today's generation doesn't work that way. Let's break down the generational conversation and what does it mean to be an intergenerational collaborator. First and foremost, what does it mean? It means you want to listen. Listening is king. This generation, above any other, wants to be heard, they want to be valued, and they want to be seen. They want to know that your presence is real, and so is your authenticity. This generation today, we're talking about our Gen Z, they're really interested in collaborating with folks, and they want to do it at a pace and cadence that makes sense for them. The greatest generation, our most oldest generation, our traditionalists, still want an opportunity to engage as well. And for them, they want to be called out of the sidelines and into the game. We also have another generation, our, our baby boom generation, who also has a great opportunity and wants to be engaged. But they believe that the currency of engagement and collaboration is relational capital. Generation X, well, they believe that relational capital is data. And millennials, they believe that relational capital is collaboration and working together. So to be an intergenerational collaborative uh, person, what you have to do is you have to first put yourself in a position to listen. Second, put yourself in a position to engage. Third, you put yourself in a position to take action. I know this firsthand because in my world, uh, one of the ways that I try to be an intergenerational collaborative uh, person is by listening to folks from different generations and particularly from Generation Z, giving them the time, the energy, and the platform to be successful. Now, I don't know about you, but in my house, we often have thoughts, ideas, maybe we'll call them disagreements about how we see the world. But what collaboration really means is that we put those things aside and I ask you questions of curiosity. I want to know what you think. I want to know how you feel. And I want to have vision to see what that looks like in a successful manner. What we have in front of us today, the challenge that we have in front of us today is to look at some of the statistics and say, no, not in our world. We are not going to let generational discord lead where we go. We actually are going to look for intergenerational synergy. We're going to look to be great collaborators and we're going to build intergenerational trust. And we're going to do that by being present, by being authentic, and by being connected to one another. In the next phase of your life, wherever you are now, I'm going to challenge you to don't, don't think about a generation as a generation that you have an adversarial position with. I'd rather you think about that generation as someone you can collaborate with and that you can figure out not only how they can help you, but how they can be helped by you and by your connected, connectedness to them. This is 
not just a challenge for those in the workplace today, this is a challenge for those of the workforce tomorrow. Stay with me for just a second because I want you to think deep and long about the way you grew up. It might have been very different. You might have been the one who rode the bike until sun went down and then you knew you had to come home. Well, right now what we know is that this generation is experiencing the highest levels of loneliness and isolation that any generation has seen. This generation has challenges connecting to social media in ways that you and I and others from other generations don't know. So for us to be a focused intergenerational collaborator, we have got to embrace a generation that's outside of our own. We've got to do it through curiosity, we have to do it through authenticity, and we have to do it through real engagement. This is not going to be easy, but it is going to be something that we can do if we all decide to work together and we decide to put ourselves second and put the needs of others first. I'm going to offer a challenge to all of you from this perspective. To be a real intergenerational collaborator, you got to give before you get, you got to offer before you ask. And when you do that, you're going to find successes that are good, that go beyond any kind of measurement that comes to mind today. Hope you have a great afternoon and thank you for this opportunity to share with you today.